Hi, this is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to open or import files to Photoshop. Theme tune. Do 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 do. Open files. Open files. Import files. It's my open file dance. Okay, so this is part number five of my Learn Photoshop tutorial course. If you want the whole course, then head over to photosincolor.com where you can download it and get all of these source files too. So, what is the Photoshop, different ways of importing and getting photo, photos into Photoshop? Now, you can just drag an image and drop it straight in. But remember, there's different file formats, images are stored in different places, and Photoshop actually works slightly differently the way that you bring an image in. So let's jump into Photoshop and let's have a look. So, once we open Photoshop, this is what we get. So, we have a list of the previous images that we've got. It's our, my previous 20 images. Now, they may be in list format, or they may be like this. So the first way to open an image is if you've already worked on it, all you have to do is click on it and it's going to open the image. Nice and simple. So let's come out of this, back to the beginning here. Now another way to open an, uh, an image, if it's a recent image, is you can go File, and there's Open Recent, and then there's a full list of all these ones there, but it's the same ones that are here. Now, another way that you can do it is you can go File, and I can go Open, and then I have a series of images here, then let's just select on one, and I can hit Open, and it will literally open up the image like so. Now, a quicker way to do that is Command-O, which is the shortcut for that, and again, I can select that image, and I can just hit Open. Now, what I'm selecting every time that I'm doing this is I'm selecting a JPEG. So it works different if you've got a raw file. Now the other way of importing is you come over here and this is just in, on my computer. I can see my JPEG file here. I can pick it up, drag it, and I can drop it like so. And then I have the new image. So that's how you open an image inside. Now you can see in Photoshop there's many ways of doing the same thing. So different people do things in different ways. I'm just going to try and show you as many as I possibly can. So, that's essentially that. But what happens if you want to open a RAW file? Well, I have that same image unedited as a NEF, which is a, a Nikon um, RAW file. And all I have to do is pick it up and drag it over here, then I'm going to hit open. Now what you see is it's actually opened it inside something called Adobe Camera Raw. You can see it up here. Now essentially, Adobe can't just open a raw file. It has to be processed first. So this is what it is. Now I could just hit open image and it will open it without any edits done whatsoever. So it's actually said that it's in a different working space than what I actually have it all set. So I'm going to convert, I'm going to use the embedded profile for that and away we go. That's the color space that we've got just here and this is the image imported, but there's been no edits. So let me just come out of this really quickly and show you a few of the things. So I can't just get rid of this, it's going to ask me to save it. So I can hit don't save. Now I can open up a raw file in the same ways. Command O would be able to go navigate to it. I can drag and drop or I could select from here. So Adobe Camera Raw essentially is a lot like Lightroom. Now my next tutorial is all going to be about um, Adobe Camera Raw, so I won't go into it there. But I am going to show you a few different things here. So remember, if I take the raw file and I open it in here, what it's going to do is it's going to open up Adobe Camera Raw. Now, let me quickly, before I close that down, let me open up Lightroom and let's have a look at that same image. So I'm going to reset the image and this is exactly the same image that you can see here. Now, what I would suggest, any raw file, okay, what I would definitely suggest doing is not opening it up straight away in Photoshop, but use Lightroom instead. Now, if you don't have Lightroom or don't use Lightroom, then there's no need to actually use it. 
Um, and so this isn't an, op an option. I have an entire training course on Lightroom so you can learn all about it there. But essentially, in the develop module, I've got all of these settings. These are essentially the same settings which are available in Adobe Raw. Now, the difference is this. If I import it straight in using Adobe Raw, so for example, I boost, let's just boost the exposure, for example, I hit open image, and then it's gonna open the image, it's gonna give me the same options as before, and you can see there. Now I can do the same thing over here, change that exposure, okay, it does exactly the same thing, uses the same processes, but what I can do from here, because this is where I might store all of my raw images, all I have to do is I just go right click, edit in Photoshop. Now you can see what it's actually gonna do is it's gonna open up the same image, okay, like so, and it's gonna open it up. This is now the same image. You can see two different versions of it. The same image has been opened, but didn't have to open Adobe Camera Raw. So that kind of skips that step. So I can have all of my edits over here in Lightroom and just move it over to this side. Now, what's the advantage of that? The advantage is this. If over here, for example, I now make an edit, so let's go in here and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, uh, let's clone stamp and I'm just gonna remove this down the side here. Now, this isn't a clone stamp tutorial, so I'm not going to do a very good job of this, but for example, if I was to, sorry, let's just come back in here, set all this like so. Again, I'm not actually, this isn't an actual tutorial on the clone stamp. So you can see here, I'm essentially very badly getting rid of that strap. Now, if I hit Command Save here, it's gonna save over here and automatically in Lightroom, you're gonna see that I now have both versions. So I can go ahead inside here and for example, use any of my presets and make these edits in here. Now, that's Lightroom tutorial, so you can get into that in the future. But if for example, I was to make the same edit over here, okay, Essentially what would happen is once I save this out, I don't have that option. I would then have to re-import it into Lightroom and do lots of other different things. It means that I have to do lots more and more importing. So my recommendation so would be to where possible avoid Adobe Camera Raw and import it from Lightroom. So that was kind of a long way around there about how to open in Adobe Camera Raw and the advantages of using Lightroom, and there are many. So let's have a look now at one other thing that you should know when opening an image. So for example, let's say that we have opened up this image. Okay, this is a JPEG. And then I wanna add in another image. Now we'll get into different things with that later, but let's say we want to now open up um, this picture of the girl dancing on top of it. Now watch, I can drag this girl in here and put it on here, and it's gonna pop that image in. Now when I hit enter, that's now been placed. But over on the side here, you can see it's got this little tiny box. Now that means that it's been imported as a smart object, okay? So I'm not gonna explain what a smart object is too much now because I'm gonna do a tutorial on it, but essentially a smart object means if I then go and make an edit to the original one of this, those edits will happen on the image just here. Might not be something you always want. So, if you would want to, to add this image to this file without making it a smart object, now I could bring it in and I could now convert the smart object whilst I'm in, Okay, we, by rasterizing the layer, and then that's no longer a smart object. Very quick and easy to do. Now, an, another option for doing this, let me just delete that layer, would be if you've already got this open and you want to open a second image, I can drag and drop, but now if I drop it in the top toolbar here, it's gonna open it as a completely separate tab. And now I've got it in the tab, I can pick it up and I can move it into this one here, and you can see now it's not a smart object and I can move it around as I please. So what you will have seen a few things that I just did to go back, I now have created multiple tabs in the top of Photoshop. 
And I can do this many times. So if I hit Command O and I'm going to open yet another image, let's open this one that we did at the beginning. What it's going to do is default is it's going to open it as another tab. Now I can pick the tabs up and I can rearrange the tabs. I can move them to change their order or I can bring it out and have it as a completely different window, which is really quite fantastic. Drag it back into the bar and it's going to place it here. Now, if you want to now look at all of these images at the same time, window, arrange, and let's say three up horizontal, it's going to now place all of these images three up horizontal, which means it's very easy now to move things between the different windows if you're wanting to do that. Then you can arrange and consolidate all tabs, and then it brings it back to this one just here. So essentially, that was very many different ways of opening an image inside Photoshop. Now remember, because there's lots of different ways, you'll find the best way of doing it for you and it might change different images. But that was a brief overview of exactly how to do it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and definitely subscribe to my channel as I have loads more videos coming. And also, if you want this entire training course, head over to photosincolor.com where you can download all of these videos and get all of the source files to practice with too. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune.